This episode was sponsored by Showbiz Management. Vancouver's premier talent agency providing background performers and actors for all areas of media, including film, television, commercials, music videos, documentaries, and much more. So if your production needs performers or you want to be a background performer yourself, please visit them at www.showbizmanagement.com or call them at 604-435-7469. That's Showbiz Management, providing quality performers since 1993. Welcome, everyone, to the Tons of Productions podcast on this Monday, July 1st, 2019. And for those who don't know, it's Canada Day, so yay, long weekend. Um, Today, I interview Michael Bishop, who is a first assistant director in the Vancouver film industry and is a real pleasure to talk to. He's, He's really funny, and from the years of his experience, he gives great advice for everyone. So here you go. Here is Michael Bishop. We're listening to the Tons of Productions podcast. All right, and we're speeding. Uh, thank you, Mike, for coming and uh, doing this thing again. I Last time I had an SD card screw up, and this whole interview I had with Mike Bishop just for a ride and was gone and i was so upset oh my god and i was really patient, I was really patient <laughs> you were amazing really, actually yeah. and you came back and you just yeah and i'm back i love it i love it yeah and it was great because i when i when i was thinking about it it was um it was uh what am i trying to say here it was um i was like okay well i've done a rehearsal now i've said i i i now i've now there's some things that i regretted on the last interview that i said that i just think well i won't mention on the second interview <laughs> And then um, it'll be more of a politically correct version. So the rehearsal was good. So it'll, I'll be a little no, more it was a great interview. We talked about a yeah. lot of stuff yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. Um, but we also had uh, uh, some stuff that we probably shouldn't talk about. You're right. That was uh, pretty heavy duty. Yeah. Very, very heavy duty. Very um, non-politically correct. <laughs> um, I just want to say, Alyssa Milano, I love you. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so, um, so the listeners know, I'm going to start out. Uh, uh, how did you, um, uh, where were you born? What, how did you start out? Uh, where was I born? Well, okay, so I was born in Germany, in Lahr, in Schwarzwald. Oh, province of wow. Schwarzwald, uh, Lahr, and a Canadian military base. Uh, my father was a member of the Canadian Airborne Regiment, so he was out there um, training commandos or something, the, uh, a mechanized commando thing. And... Um, my mother was a daughter of a minister, <laughs> so my father obviously had amazing taste. <laughs> um, yeah, he ran her down and then um, had two, uh, had myself, my sister, my sister first, then me, and then um, we moved to uh, back to Canada, back to Nova Scotia. Oh, Nova Scotia is where, the, where your dad was from? Yeah, where my father was from. Nice. He ended up going his own way, uh, and my mother ended up going her own way. We stuck with the mom because she's the mother. Was she, she German? Uh, no, no, no. They're all Canadian. Oh, he met her in Canada yeah. and brought yeah. her there. So when um, um, do you, are, do you have dual citizenship? No, because what happens is when you're, if you're a Canadian citizen and you're a Canadian soldier and you're in another country, uh, the majority of the uh, military bases that are um, run by, you know, certain countries like Americans or Canadians, they actually have their own territory that they own. So... If I go there, or if my mother goes there, and she's and there's a Canadian military base there, it's Canadian, it's Canadian territory. So yeah, it's like the embassy, like you're on Canadian land. Kinda, in yeah. Germany. So when I was born, I was born on a in a Canadian hospital on a Canadian military base. Um, so I was considered a Canadian citizen. I see. Yeah. So um, yeah, because I tried to um, I tried to actually get German citizenship, and I went to the I went to the embassy or wh- whatever you call it here, the the German place. And I, and I asked, I'm like, hey, man, uh, so uh, I was born in Germany. And they're like, oh, let's see birth certificates. Or I, I, can't, I can't do accents. <laughs> Gave him my German, because it, it, it was a, 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 the original birth certificate was, like, it was German. Okay. And, but they quickly discovered that no, and they just shut me down. And it was very, oh. ger- it was very German. Because you know, like, no, that no, could no, be no, a no. Euro citizenship. Yeah, you might be like, oh. <laughs> shooting movies in Germany. Oh, yeah. They're fun. The Germans are fun to work with. 
They they laugh. Those people laugh. Yeah, I did a, I did a, a, a television series with them. Uh, we shot on Bowen Island uh, about five or six years ago, and I had a German director and a German cinematographer, an all German cast, and um, oh my god, all of them are really fantastic. Like they love laughing. Like there's like they get off on that. Like I and and bec- and because I like to make people laugh. It was very, very fun. It was a fit for you. you oh yeah, were... I had a really great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had this. Uh, we had this one actress. I forget her name now, but she's really big in Germany. She's like, a, she'd be like a Jillian. What's her name from X Files? Jillian Anderson. Yeah, she's yeah like yeah. Jillian Anderson in Germany. She's like the big detective, the, the beautiful kind of older lady detective, smart, you know. Right. And uh, um, I was. I remember sitting with her one day and going, "Have you ever YouTube yourself and just watched videos?" <laughs> and she's like, ha 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 ha! No, no, Mike, I would never do. No, no, no. I'm like, no, let, no, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's check you. Let's out. check. So I, I get my, I get my phone and I, and I type in her name, and and the first thing came up was like, uh, like I forget her name, but we'll just say Katerina Witt, right? Oh, Katerina Witt. Oh, uh, smoking uh, montage, and she's like, no, smoking, and then it's just like a bunch of videos. Some dude just got like a whole like like her, her like her whole library of her being a smoking detective, and just created like a three minute video of her smoking cigarettes constantly and yeah. she was laughing she's like stop stop no i don't want to see another i'm like no dude, we're gonna we're gonna run with this <laughs> grabbed another one same thing like just some you know like oh katarina went uh walking along the road concerned about the law you know and she's like <laughs> walking really fast with her like jacket on and yeah it was really funny it's kind of like the chuck norris thing yeah yeah so exactly. they have like little bit after bit after bit after bit yeah and there's people that are just like grabbing that are bored at home that really like them and and you know actors because you see it all the time and they grab clips and they and they create their own little their own edits you know and um yeah so so that, you know I, I remember that moment and then um the director was just oh he was i actually recorded him because he used to grab a radio and he would talk to the cinematographer who was german as well on a radio and they would talk in german like and uh, none of us had any idea what they were talking about. Right, but they right. would talk with like oh, talk, 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 talk. Yeah. such intensity. <laughs> and then so I would um, I would I would like be getting my phone and I'd be with the hair and makeup girls and I'd just be like recording it and like we'd all be like reacting like ooh 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 Germans ooh. So I mean that was a, that's a cool experience. Well, oh, you get an app now on your phone where you can translate right away as yeah. soon as they say it. Yeah, yeah. Have you uh, used that on set? Yeah, uh, not <laughs> yet, not yet. But I have used it when my girlfriend was mad at me. They have a redhead version. They're like, oh, girlfriend's redhead. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Rah! Yes, Michael, you're in trouble. Shit. Okay, right. So, that's know. awesome. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So born in Germany, came over. Um, because my parents were military, I was posted everywhere all the time. So I'd be always going to different schools. So I did, uh, I did Nova Scotia, I did Winnipeg, did Toronto, did uh, Alberta, did Victoria. Was this like year to year, like, or were you like two um, years? Then every, go? a couple years. Because when you're when you're when you're when your uh, parents are young, they tend to get posted more. Posted meaning you know sent to different areas of the country to do military service, military work, right? And so since we weren't at war, they were just always training these guys, right? So we were always going to these bases and they were always, you know, my dad's were always getting, my, my, at this time, uh, my stepfather was getting trained all the time. So the, the best thing was when we got to Victoria, he got trained in Victoria. He, I mean, not trained in Victoria, but his last kind of posting was in Victoria. Right, right. And so that's where, you know, that was, that's kind of my anchor. So, I mean, I got there when I was like in grade four, so nine years old, eight years old, nine years old. And then um, lived uh, a bit of my life out in Gordon Head, and then out into Colwood, into Langford. Shout out to Langford boys, right? And <laughs> um, and then yeah, and then so I I was out there till I was probably like in my mid twenties, right? And then um, you know started working when I was like, well, I was I was probably starting to work around so eighteen nineteen, uh, working at shipyard. So I worked at uh, Point Hope Shipyard for a couple of years, taking apart uh, decommissioned Navy minesweepers. Um, wow. Yeah. And then, um, then I eventually just became a heavy equipment operator, which was like really, really great job. Um, um, driving like front end loaders and bobcats and stuff like that. Um, and while I was doing that, I was going to, uh, the Victoria college of art, um, studying art, uh, studying painting, you know, different types of painting, painting with acrylic oils, even working at charcoal, you know, pencil. What did your, uh, what, what did your parents think of that? Because that art, like going to school for art is usually not, 
a good thing when so, someone's kid they're always like fighting with it well that was the thing was i i mean ever since i was little i loved drawing so i was a very good drawer when i was when i was younger um and I, and i committed to it so i showed commitment to it so my parents were always kind of down with oh well, they knew you had the skill for it so that's why it wasn't just because oh it's easy to do art yeah yeah and it, and it's and and i guess because i really enjoyed doing it i still enjoy doing it um they were willing to you know put money towards that you know so um so they did my my grandparent my my grandfather did um so i did that while i was working um and then eventually uh that finished i graduated that probably it was like it was a year and a half or a year it was a year and a half it was like yeah it was like 14 months or 15 months or something and then i did uh and then i got laid off and then i was just like oh shit like what am i gonna do i think i was like 24 25 at that point okay um and i was paying off a mountain bike and um, the person I was going to pay off was actually a friend of mine because his parents were in the military. Uh, his name was Alan, and um, we'd grown up together, ironically enough. I think, yeah, I think he kind of like helped set me up with the loan for this mountain bike because it was like a, a GTLTS or something, like a dual suspension bike. So he... Uh, it was the shit at the it time. Was the right? shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, it was like a, a pretty serious bike. And, um, yeah, he's like, oh, you're getting laid off, eh? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, well, you know, you should, uh, you should go on EI, man. You should do one year. You ever think about getting into filmmaking? And I'm like, filmmaking. I'm like, uh, not really. Like, I don't really watch, watch any movies. I'm not a big movie guy. Like, it wasn't a passion of yours. It wasn't a passion of mine. And, and then he's like, well, you know, you're, you're, you're just finishing it, wrapping up a year in, in, in art school and, and you're out there, you know, working, um, you know, pretty, dangerous manual labor intensive jobs you know i mean he's like that's kind of the film industry in a nutshell yeah you know you've got this creative aspect of it and then you've got this really hard working and sometimes dangerous sometimes not you know <laughs> a process that's going on that that he thought that would be really uh, that would work well with me and so i was like oh okay all right well that's kind of interesting so then i went to uh I took that to heart, and then I, I, I ended up, I, I think a few weeks later, going to Chapters, because back then they didn't have the internet. So I went uh, into Chapters, into the film area, and I grabbed a book on gripping. And so I read the book on gripping. It's an amazing book, by the way. I, I seriously suggest uh, reading it. It's a big picture book. You know what I mean? <laughs> of it's all the gear? Huge, huge picture book. Of everything? Yeah, and then it's you... perfect for me, because okay. I, have, I, have I have a hard time comprehending what I, whatever I read. So I can't commit to anything too uh, complicated or I just start forgetting it all. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, a dolly, you know, things like that. So then we went to, uh, so I got that book, uh, read it, liked it, uh, and then started thinking about consider, like, considering or considered thinking about, you know, taking this course, or looking into taking courses. So I went to Victoria, where did I go to? Victoria Motion Picture Academy. And I think I looked at a couple places in Victoria but they just seemed kind of like, they seemed really drab. Or what was my references last time? Yeah, there was like, for example, <clears throat> from the last interview that we did, <laughs> um, the guy had like this doorway dolly. And, and like, like and I don't know if you guys have seen a doorway dolly, but it's, just, it's a piece of wood with four wheels and like a big T-bar, steel T-bar. And you just put your tripod on there and your camera and, and, and it's, your, it's your dolly, right? And I'm like, I'm like, oh... He's like, yeah, so... Uh, so it looked he, cheap. It didn't yeah, look... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when I got there, the guy's like, you know, hey, welcome uh, to the, you know, and huge name, Victoria Motion Picture uh, Film Academy, you know, um, so... I just They're wanna... almost like patting themselves on the back while yeah, they yeah, say... Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're the best. And uh, and they're like, I just want to, I just want to show you guys some gear so that you walk over and you can hang out and... This is a uh, <clears throat> this is a doorway dolly, guys. You know, and I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I've read this grip book. I I think that there's more out there than a doorway dolly. <laughs> yeah. Like, and it just kind of like seemed like they were in this office, and it, like it just didn't seem. It just I don't know. I guess maybe I, I was pretty intuitive when it comes to like a good school. I don't know. Well, no, but you're also like paying tuition, so you got to be uh, have a. Uh, um, like you have to look it over and, and look into it. It's yeah. not like you can just go in and go, oh, here's my 10 grand. All oh, this is a shit school. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that school was at that time 14. It was between 11 and 14, which was a lot of money back then. Oh, right? yeah. In 1999. Well, and that was a lot of money. Uh, I mean, it still is. Um, so I was like, no, it's not going to work. And then there was another one that I, that I saw and they were just playing with XL ones. I think they were, I think they were GLs. 
Canon Canon XL ones or GLs or something. Just not good. Like I could just like now that I've been kind of looking around and looking at, at seeing what they actually have. I was kind of interested in the film program. And whenever I saw a digital camera, I got nervous. I'm like, well, if this institution isn't committing at least a little bit towards film, then I'm going to have nothing to brag about in 2015. You know? <laughs> so um, I went over to Vancouver and um, I went to Vancouver Film School. So when I went to Vancouver Film School, it was a significant, significantly different experience. Uh, it seemed more anchored. It, 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 um, when you go into the facility at the time in 2000, I think they've moved it around now. I think they actually kicked out that. Um, there used to be that. Remember in Gastown on Water Street, there was like that. Mu there was a museum. They built this big museum. Um, and. And now it's completely, it was pulled away, and now it's Vancouver Film School. A, the Vancouver Film School moved in there. Oh, I know the, the Vancouver space. Film School building, but that used to be a museum? Yeah, so if you go, like, well, there's the, there's the Hastings. There's, there's the, there, there's the um, lunchroom on Hastings, and then if you go uh, a block um, west, um, then there's the actual, where I did film production was there. Um, but then if you go into Gastown, uh, there's this older... Um, older build or not a newer building that got built um, right by the easy park it's kind of part of the easy park there on water street 100 block of water street i think like water and cami and that's all vfs now they've completely grown it's unbelievable i, I mean their prices i'm sure have doubled or or they've gone up significantly well um, they had a campaign because I, I know a lot of people that went there um to vfs because they went to their town i know people yeah. from edmonton i know people from different places they went around the country and said oh come join our school yeah yeah. Right, and that was their big campaign, a big push. Because I don't think any other film school did that. I'm from Ontario, and I don't yeah. remember any coming through and being. Yeah, and I mean, I think that, and that was a time again when there wasn't a lot of internet, there wasn't any social media, right? Like that's, I mean, social media kind of started picking up in 2008, 2009, you know, or with with uh, Facebook. So, and I remember, I remember now that I'm looking at it, I remember the the booklet you, you get for VFS. Okay, and it yeah. was like it was like a maroon maroon and white that's all i remember but i remember like that book was impressive <laughs> well also before yeah. the internet we were all kind of dumb yeah like really when it came down to that whatever the person selling you stuff you know you can't look at it you can't research yeah. it yeah no you can't no you unless no. you talk to someone who went to that school yeah you don't know but yeah. now you go look at reviews and you can look 10th oh that guy's full of yeah. crap yeah. yeah yeah you could yeah you could literally search hey um vancouver film school experience you know, yeah. Um, and and the thing too is that if you if you try to get someone's advice on the school, I mean, it's so subjective, right? Because it's there's so many, people have different experiences. Because I think a lot of people go in not thinking how difficult it's actually going to be, and it is surprisingly difficult. Um, it wasn't. I mean, it wasn't surprisingly. It wasn't difficult for me per se, just because I think that the challenges that were really prominent in that school were, were was you know working together as a team teamwork and just be, and you come and, from military and, 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 background yeah, and just kind of adapting so yeah i mean i did sea cadets from 12 well navy league from freaking nine or ten till 13 and then sea cadets 13 to 19 and moving so, all that time probably yeah. builds your personality to get along with strangers yeah exactly yeah and and going from different school to school so you just you kind of have a, a higher survival rate like if it was if it was uh, naked and afraid it'd be like michael bishop has a uh, survival score of 9.2 <laughs> You know, <laughs> we're Marty it. over here who has been, you know, he's a 2.1. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So when I went into it, it was fine. I, I, I didn't really struggle very much. You dominated but, probably. But I could see, <laughs> but I could definitely see people like we had 41 people, right? When we graduated, we had like 18 or 19, more than half the class left. Quit. Quit, quit the program. Well, I got a theory about that too. Yeah, it is that there's entertainers and there's they're entertained in the world, and people yeah. want to be the entertained, want to be celebrities. They want to yeah. do that. They don't want to do the work, but they want to yeah. go and be a part of this world that they is so fascinated by. Yeah. And then when they get there, they realize, oh, this is way harder than I thought. Yeah. They're either it's, not smart enough, or they don't have the work ethic, or there's something about it. Yeah. You have to talk to a lot of people. Yeah, you know, there's, well, I mean, people have anxiety. I mean, again, when we were crewing up, when we were doing our own projects, we'd have to crew up, right? Like people would have to take specific jobs. So whoever wrote the script got to do direct, right? So whatever script got written uh, or, or selected, that person became the director, right? So whenever you went, went in to write, you, you had to go in there thinking, I'm going to be directing if this game gets picked. But once you, once that happens, the director then gets to, to pick their producer, right? Oh. 
That yeah, they're in charge. Do they pick the cast, dude? They do casting? Um, no. So they go. Oh. So director goes. Director goes. Um, I'm the so staff go. We like your script. We're gonna shoot that script. Um, and then so so say Tanya, she gets picked, and she's like, "Oh my god, thanks guys." You know. Um, so oh I'm gonna, I, you know, I want Michael Bishop to be my producer, and I'm like, hey, all right, let's <laughs> let's make a movie, right? And she's like, okay, let's do this, let's thing. cast, and then so um, what'll happen is the director will go off, and then we'll get some Vancouver um, film school students coming in, um, some at, from the acting department, right? And then they audition, and then so it's kind of a collaborative thing. So the director will sit there uh, sometimes with the producer. And watch some auditions, and the class will be there. You know what I mean to to just see, witness, like see how these audition things go down. Um, but the you know um, usually the directing instructor and the director pick uh, who who are going to be in the who are going to be the final picks in the in the program. Um, so uh, so yeah, so that would happen, and then and then we go to camera. But um, again, what will hap- What happens is the producer then starts crewing up, right? So the producer, so the producer will be like, um, <clears throat> "Okay, uh, Milton, you're the script supervisor." And it's like film school, right? Nobody wants to be a fucking script supervisor, right? They're like, "Script supervisor, <laughs> I don't even know what that job is. Fuck this program." Er, well, and they that leave. takes a certain kind of person, dude. They leave. Like, oh we, yeah, we had like like what, our first round of picks. Like, someone got picked to grip, and they didn't want to grip because what they do is they say what they want to do, but because of the amount of positions and numbers, and yeah. You, you, you just got to do the job. And then, so what happened was a lot of people would drop out of the school program just because they didn't want to be a boom up or just because they didn't want to, you know, I mean, majority of the time, don't get me wrong, majority of the time, the people that wanted to do the job that they want to do, they got to do it. But there were some instances where um, they had to take another job. Yeah, but, but okay, here's the thing is it's make believe because you're learning in school, mm-hmm. you know, and it's also beneficial to learn all these skills. If you're going to be a producer and a director of your own independence mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. have to know this shit, because if someone backs out as, yeah. as the casting director or as, as whatever, and you got to fill those shoes, then all of a sudden you're throwing that hat on and, and, and taking care of that job. And if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Well, and I think also too is, is a lot of these kids were very short sighted in terms of their, of their you know experiences like oh, okay. you know it's it's yeah i mean you're right you you know you've just because you're going to be a boom op doesn't mean you're going to be a boom op the rest of your life but you should pick up that boom and record the sound for now it's experience and experience i mean you're you as a filmmaker to all you folks out there that are good wanting to be filmmakers you're always going to be learning no matter what year you're in I mean, to the day you die or the, the day you retire, <laughs> dying, yeah. retiring, dying, whatever. It doesn't, you'll never learn it all. You'll, you'll, you'll never have it all because it's just such a, a beautiful, uh, pro, it's such a beautiful art form, um, where you've got sound lighting, you've got, you've got everything. It's all, that's ultimately why I was drawn towards it was because it's, it's, it's everything. It's everything that's artistic. You can just, you can always, you know, incorporate it into your, into your film. Anyway. So I think that these people just had a really hard time dealing with uh, having to be, you know, working maybe like a lesser position and, you know, the anxiety would get in there and then, the, you know, they'd be uncomfortable about it and then they'd be difficult to work with because they're not happy, you know, and, and, and um, you know, maybe a lot of them are just used to being happy a lot. And then, you know, people like, you know, the instructors start giving them a hard time and then all of a sudden they quit, right? They don't care. They're just like, like whatever. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, but it also... You know, once you're done and you're at that grad party and there's 18 or 19 of you and you're all looking at each other, you're all kind of going, okay, well, like who um, now we're all going into the real world. Who's going to be still doing it? So I remember about a month ago, me and my buddy Misha, who was in my program, um, we touched base and we're like, let's try to track down all the people that graduate and see if all of them are working in film. And so we did. And none of them are working in film. <laughs> Not one? Not one. I think there's a, I th- you know what? I think, uh, what no, does Misha do? Uh, Misha's an editor. He's, oh, okay. He, I think he's over at, with Rockstar in, in Toronto or something. He's doing really well. He's like a creative director. He's, he's directing. Um, I think though, I do believe a, there's a, a girl that was in our class named Melissa who might be editing, um, or teaching editing. I'm not sure. And Ryan Forger, who might be doing something, but I, I, I don't know. Well, I don't it's not so. for everybody. Well, that's the thing, too, is that when we, when we were in there, our directing instructor, um, he told us that only like one in 10 people will be working in film in 10 years from this date. Right. So, you know, I'm like, oh, OK, cool. 10 years. Well, that was almost 20 years ago. So um, I'm like, OK, cool. So 
I think it, you know, I, I, I think a lot of them, I went in there going, uh, this is going to be my career. Like, I'm committing to this. Yeah, well, you yeah. taught me a lot. When yeah. I first met you was, I, I love you, Beth Cooper, I think, is yeah. when I first met you. Yeah. Um, and you were key on that, right? Yeah. yeah. It was you and Rich uh, Tickner, and we, um, I had just started in film, and I watched how you guys operate, and I watched how you uh, dealt with a group of people and stuff, and yeah. it, it intrigued me. Yeah. But I realized it took a lot of attention, and it took a lot of um, discipline to a degree, because yeah. it... It's a hierarchy system. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, and I loved it because it was something you were dedicated to. You could tell, yeah. even though you joked around and you, whatever, you'd yeah. never let something slide. You never forget yeah. that that's got to be here at three o'clock or whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. It was not going to escape you because yeah. you're, um, even as a key PA or as a PA, you're professional in what you do. And that's yeah. where I see guys who are above. I've seen ALMs who aren't professional. Yeah. Or I've seen people who are above that position and just yeah. lackadaisical and, oh, yeah, whatever. Well, yeah, and especially nowadays because we've got, so many, we've got so many shows, you get a lot of people that are actually surprised to be in that position. I've found myself surprised to be in that position. So it's, it's, um, it's, it's a good thing in a way, but it's also not a good thing in a way. I mean, you... I mean, to represent the people in this province, you know, uh, the, the film workers in this province, you want them all to be good, but you just can't because you got so many shows coming and you just got to start hiring people and start training them on the day. I mean, when I, I remember uh, Smallville on Smallville, the third AD on that show was, uh, you know, been thirding for like 13 years or 12 years. They were like <laughs> career wow. thirds. Oh like, my God. I'm like, I'm like, fuck, I, w I would do not, right. want to, I do not want to be in a trailer for, you know, whatever amount of years, even, even eight or nine years, 10 years. Like, no, like this is just a, this is, a, this is a, a, an experience that I just quickly want to get over. Well, it also depends on the team you're working with. Say you're working with your buddies who are really cool. That mm -hmm. might be a different story mm -hmm. because when you were, you, it was a job when you were in the trailer. Right. But if, yeah. it, if it was like super easy, you might have a different look at, it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If it was. Um, but yeah, so it, it's, um, I think that it's, it's good that the industry is moving a little bit faster and people can move up quicker and, mm -hmm. but yeah, you definitely get some, uh, you definitely get some, uh, people that are, are in those positions and they just shouldn't be, you know? Oh yeah. I know people mm -hmm. that should not be ALMs. Mm -hmm. I, they were, yeah. they were the key PA and they, they're the one that had the most experience. So oh, let's just make yeah. them the ALM. What? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's just like, well, what do you do where you, you know, the, has to be a DGC member. You know, I mean, we can permit someone, but still, it's you know. I've I've also had uh, a, a couple of t different shows where I worked on where they were like the people that are union members mm -hmm. aren't um, how do you put it that smart mm -hmm. <laughs> or that yeah, good yeah. at their job. Yeah. But you're not a union member, so they bumped me up even though it was they're more supposed to. And the, yeah. but this is around PAs and keys and whatever. They may ever paid me key rate. I just did that job and yeah. I ended up van driving and not yeah. being a union member and that kind of thing. Yeah. And I've been on shows like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, there's surprisingly a lot of non-union uh, business that goes on. I mean, a lot of the shows that are in Vancouver, a lot of the MOWs and the LBA shows are all, they're all, you know, non-union. So you get all these kids like literally kids focus pulling. <laughs> yeah. Kids. Yeah. Focus pulling, for, for which is an assistant. important job. Kids. Like, like, like 19, like 20. And then, but, and then this is my own opinion. Okay. Um, but you, and you see them acting like focus pullers, like with egos and, and they, they've somehow picked up that they can be disrespectful to ADs because they're focus pullers and they're, or they can be disrespectful to other people in their camera department. And it's just like, you really do want to pull them aside and shake them and go, listen, dude, like. You're a kid out of a candy store. Like, have you ever, like, where's your, you're, you're, you're not a unionized member. Like, you haven't gone through the trainee program. You haven't gone through the mud. You haven't gone through this. You haven't gone through that. I mean, it's subjective, but I've seen, I've seen camera teams. Like, I've been, I've, I've literally, I was working for this one company, and their camera teams were notor like actually notorious for just being rude and super inexperienced, but super rude. Like, so, so ego like, way above their ability. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, okay, you know what? You can pull focus and you got your fizzer unit and you can hang out and you can play the game, but you haven't gone through the proper, you know, the, the normal proper steps. And the, and the reason why you're in this position is because of the, I don't know if it's the unions kind of like let, letting, it, letting it slide or whatever, but, or them not sucking them up and trying to get them on board and, and get these guys properly trained. But, you know, it's out there and, and I see it. Um, I mean, but it happens with all other departments as well, too. I've seen ADs, I, you know, kids become ADs really quickly and, 
you know, they move up and then you can kind of see them and you can just see that they're not going to be nice when they're, when they're, you know, in a higher position. So it's with anything. Yeah. Or, or, or how many times I see a first AD who was a PA at one time, be rude to PAs like he wasn't yeah. and talk down to them. Like he's Mr. Man. It's like, Oh my God, I'm like you. Yeah. yeah. We're in the same team here. How come yeah. you're talking to me that way? Yeah. That's weird. You know? Yeah. Um, and then when it got really busy, I found as a PA, I would go to show to show and if they were rude or made me do dangerous stuff or mm-hmm. something like that, I say, Hey, there's a million shows. I could just, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, I can just F off too. even yeah. though it's not good to do for your reputation. I know that, uh, uh stick out what you, uh, what you said you would do, stick it out and do it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. With, within, like I remember peeing one time and, and they put me in an underground parking lot and they forgot about me. Oh yeah. I've been forgot or forgot about too. And I'm like, I'm like, so where, what am I doing here? They're like, Oh, okay. You're going to just be, uh, you're going to be watching the overflow lot. Uh, so when, you know, if we have any cars that won't fit in the lot, they're going to come down to you. I'm like, okay, well they all fit in the lot. And so I'm down in this underground and I don't have any cell service cause I'm in the bottom of this underground lot and I'm there for 15, like 14 hours. And I'm like, <laughs> And wait, like, no lunch, no nothing? No nothing, no nothing. And, oh. and I didn't want to leave because I was new, right? I was like, oh, shit. And you're I was scared, like, yeah. I like, hungry and, like, thirsty. And I, and I didn't want to leave. But then, I, I, like, I think on, like, my 12th or 13th hour, I was like, okay, I got to leave. I think they, they must have forgotten about me. And so I get up into cell service land, and, like, nobody had called me. There were no messages. Just, like. Totally forgot, so, yeah. <laughs> just, called, just called my super hot girlfriend. I was like, hey, uh, so uh, you want to meet up by the uh, 40-footer out here? And then, uh, and then that was it. And then I ended up calling them and they're like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, we forgot about you. We'll bring you up for another day. I never heard from them, but that's just, it's just PA. That's just what it is. Um, but yeah. So where were we? Uh, Oh, uh, film school. So, film so school. you, you, uh, went to VFS and then you, uh, you started, um, yeah. So I, I, I did the film pro I did. I ended up committing to the film program. Um, employment insurance Canada covered it. Uh, so that's something that you guys should be looking into definitely it's weird it's it's employment insurance at that time they were very proactive with um educating people in the creative art field right so visual effects filmmaking blah 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 they would cover like i think they covered like 60 or 70 percent of my costs well they also know that you're making fat checks when you're in the industry oh yeah 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 and you're and you're like i'm paying five or six hundred bucks a week in taxes just alone a week so yeah it definitely comes back Right. But, um, yeah, they were very supportive. Um, they, um, not only continue, they, they, they continued my EI because remember I was on EI when I got laid off as a heavy equipment operator way back, you know, almost eight or nine months prior to me applying. So I was like, well, I, I'm going to be in this program for a year. So I need another year of EI. And they were like, yeah, they put me on EI. They gave me more than, um, I'm, I usually get because of my rental situation because I was living with a couple students in my class, which was amazing. Um, so they're really great with that. So then I could kind of breathe a bit. My parents didn't have to like fork over a bunch of money to, to help me get me through. Um, and I went and I did the program and I loved it. And I got to, pr- I got to produce and first AD one project. Um, and then, on f- and then I got to produce and first AD the other project, which the school didn't allow because they wanted to give everybody equal opportunity. But the producer, I think unfortunately was like hit by a car, but he was okay, but he, he was out, you know, he was, uh, he was out for a couple of weeks. And so I was just brought in, I was just going to produce. And so I was like, well, I want a first AD. So that was a really good experience. So I, w- I walked out of there like, like, like let's, let's go. And then, so <laughs> as a first AD, yeah. Like I, like I want to do this because, oh yeah, that's the thing is when I'm, you know, halfway through the class or whatever quarter of the way in, they give you the assistant directing course. And I didn't know anything about, I didn't even know the word assistant directing, you know, existed the term or whatever. So we go there. And, um, our instructor, Joanne, she's like holding this piece of paper and she's like, and she's like, okay guys, so, um, this is the assistant directing course. Uh, so get your pieces of paper. So we all have these pieces of paper and she's like, okay, so, um, so, you know, it's at the very top, uh, it says roll sound. So you just say roll sound and then, uh, the, you know, the, the boom up will say speed, you know, and then, um, and then whatever happens and then you call cut and then you either move on or you. And I kind of go to her, I'm like, so Joanne, this is a job? And she's like, yeah, this is, this is a job. I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, she's like, well, there's obviously, you know, more to it than, than that. But, you know. They call when, it rolling and cut. Yeah, but when you're, <laughs> when you're on the floor as the, your first assistant director, because they don't teach you second, they don't teach you third, they don't teach you tad. They, they just you go teach, right for first. They and... just teach first, right? Because it's, 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 a, it's a pretty intense program. They, don't, they can't really cover everything. 
Um, she's like, yeah, you know, that's, and I'm like, okay, so, and I was like, okay, so let me get this straight. There's a job on the film set where you don't really have to touch anything and you just interact with the crew and just kind of like, she's like, yeah, just motivate them. You like, run the you, whole you show. You run the show. You know, you're, you're there for the director so the director can focus on, you know, working with their actors and. Well, you're, you're basically the assistant, the right hand man of the director. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh, wow. I'm like, that's cool. I'm like, okay, well, I want to explore this job, this job further. Right. And um, so she's like, yeah, that's a good idea. So then, so whenever we did a project, I was just like, uh, and that, that was, I was set in my mind now. Like, that's what I want to be. I want to be a first AD. Like that's, that's. Wow. That's so that, I want to. A quarter of the way into school, you knew? Yeah. 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 And then, so, um, so then that was that. And then I went to, uh, went to do the two, couple projects, graduated. Um, and then I got brought right into a company called Triton Films and I ended up doing uh, music videos for them. So there were once a weekend, um, there would be this producer, Gabriel, and he would get funding to um, shoot these music videos. So they were all shot on 35. They were um, all like the, the pretty much the top Canadian talent uh, in and around Vancouver and British Columbia. Um, and every weekend we would go and shoot or, you know, sometimes it'd be every second weekend, depending on the size of the, the project. So he would usually get between, you know, 35 and 55,000. Um, and then, you know, we, he'd get a director on board and we'd all start talking about it and we'd, and we would, uh, we'd start doing the prep during the week. Um, and then we'd come in and shoot it. So during the week, I wouldn't be, um, there with them doing any prep. He just wanted me there to be on set to run it because um, at the time he thought, man, you're like pretty good at running sets, you know, just for getting out of film school. Like you're, you're good with talking with people. You're, you're, you're nice to be around. You know, you're tall. I trust you. You're tall. I trust <laughs> you're you. You're tall. Picture. No, but okay, it, uh, dealing you. with people is, is the name of the game. If you yeah. can get people to conf not just confide, but like trust you. Yeah. Yeah. Basically yeah. that, yeah. you know what you're doing and you can control the whole thing and you'll tell them when to go. It's the right time to go and yeah. everything pictures up pictures up. Yeah. And, um, so yeah. So, I mean, the, the first couple of music videos I did were probably like, to be honest, like 10, it was really difficult. It was very intimidating. It was, um, you know, <clears throat> it's working around. I mean, a lot of these guys were union dudes. They were making good money, you know, so they were coming out and then I was just like, like straight out of film school, like want to be first AD. Um, so I would get some, I would get some blowback from that, but I, I just kept pushing aside, like whatever, whatever, like this is part of the process of where I need to get or where I want to be. So I just, you know, never took it really personal and never really thought I was doing anything wrong. I just always asked for help. Always, always when I was ADing, if I didn't know what a piece of gear was, I figured if I at least know the gear, that'll help. That's something that I can control. Like I can't control how someone feels about me, um, to a certain level. But I can control what that object is, it, and and I can I can ask what that is and learn that, so that when I you know need to clear stuff out of a shot, I know exactly what that. Yeah, stuff the seaway has to move over to the yeah, right. Yeah yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly. So, um, I found that to be a really uh, a choice that I made that, that paid off. And you'd be surprised; a lot of people don't really take too much interest in in learning the gear. And um, so then. So yeah, I did music videos. So um, I, I mean, a couple direct. I worked with Neil Blancamp. So he did he did about six or seven music videos for Gabriel, and then um, and uh, Trent Opalak, I think was his his DP. So I did I think three three or four with him. Got to know him pretty good. He was really fun, nice guy. And then we had another another director, Mark Aliari, who used to be really hard on me at first, uh, but then uh, he then after. After a couple of years, he was like, "Yeah, you know, you're you're getting good at he this." He got bit. to know you. Yeah, you're and getting was... good at this, and then, um, and then, yeah, we went off. We did we did a, a, like a Hell's Angel music video, which was a riot uh, <laughs> with all these Hell's Angels and their patches and stuff. And That's had a, so had a, had a good time with them. They were very, very, they were actually very, uh, very kind and and uh, very um, generous, you know. And, the, and they, yeah. So that, and and that was the last movie I did with, or not movie uh, music video I did with him was with Mark Allery. It was with that. And I've heard nothing but good things about him and his career. I think he's like shooting in Vietnam or something. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so when, and then when I got out of that whole music video world, um, I got into working with one company uh, called Barbershop Films. And then they would do, they were more of an EPK uh, deal where they just have, you know, it's an electronic press kit. So you have like a camera guy, sound guy, a couple lighting guys, you know, a producer, a couple producers, you know, and we would do... Um, we would shoot like micro commercials for all the hotels in, in, in Vancouver. 
So the owner, Gary, at the time, his idea was that he would shoot commercials for basically everything that he could possibly shoot uh, here in Vancouver. And he would create a channel that he would then put on all the hotels so that when you flick to that channel, you know, there's like, um, come to Denny's. Well, like in the class here, you know, come to Chin Chin. Uh, come to the sushi area where the sushi's great, you know, and the gin is cheap. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then so people would Edgewater watch Edgewater Casino, yeah, two yeah. blocks to the Edgewater down. Casino, yeah. And people would get excited about it and they want to go spend money there. So the, all, the, the majority of the hotels were on board. So um, that was exciting for us because then we had a year and a half of work to do. So we, you know, every, every, it would be the same thing as a music video thing where we would do a, a day or two of prep. And that, you know, they, the director would come up with a concept, you know, how they're going to shoot it. Uh, well, we're going we're gonna to use the jib. It always had this, this fucking jib that was on, like, these rubber legs. This, it was called a circular jib. And it was just the worst. I hate jibs. <laughs> I really do. I don't like jibs at all. Um, because of that? or Well, they just take time. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. as an AD, you, you know. You, You're you just know, like, okay. There's the, there's the jib. I don't like the jib. Uh, and I don't like that. The, the new one, the, everyone's used the movie. So the Movi, you know, the Movi, I, I, it's a is a handheld rig. It's a circular handheld rig where the camera kind of sits in the middle and it, and has a pan and tilt access kind of remote thing, and it's pretty cool. And and when it works, it's amazing, right? Like, like on a tripod? No, it's like a or it's handheld. You said is that yeah? It's right? like a it's like a it's like you're holding a, a like a like a hula hoop. Okay. Right? In the middle of that hula hoop is a um, uh, a camera. And it could be anything from an SLR to a red or whatever. I'm sure right. all the camera people are laughing at my description right now. <laughs> um, epic, whatever. Epic, right? Yeah, epic red. And primary, what you do is you just walk around like this, and then and then it, it, it tans and it, it pans and it tilts, right? Um, and it could be, I believe, it could be, it, yeah. You can you can either operate it remotely, or the operator just kind of does his thing. Anyway, I've used it on a bunch of movies. And I have this production manager who's, who's, a, who's a friend of mine as well. And we would always, if, whenever we're waiting on movies, um, <laughs> we would take pictures of the, the, the getting worked on and send it to each other, you know? And um, the thing with camera crews a lot of times is it's a very it's a very technical craft, right? And sometimes you get a lot of these guys that are involved in these, in these crews that are newer, right? As we were talking about earlier. Um, and a lot of times they're, because they're new, they don't know how to communicate properly with what, what you need to communicate to say your assistant director, or your producer in terms of what's going on with this certain, um, certain piece of product. And a lot of the times these products are being rented out by the DP or whatever. So they, you know, they don't, they don't. And is the DP the one who makes a call on using the movie? Yeah. Yeah. So, so he would say, so. On this shot, we're going to do because he could the shot list comes before you get the day, obviously. yeah. So, a lot of times the DP will have will own the, this rig, right? And the DP will be like, Yeah, you know, hey, Larry, so I'm thinking, you know, I want to bring my movie out, you know. And, and then the PM's like, Well, how much is the fucking movie, Larry? Oh, well, I'll charge you like 300 a day for it, and then like, Okay, I'll give you three days with the movie, okay, thanks. And then day one, the movie breaks down, so then the PM starts to think, Well, do I need to be paying for this movie if it keeps breaking down? So, and the, and the DP goes, oh God, like, oh, he may, you know, this might come up. Like, so they try to protect their, you know, um, they try to protect what's going on with the movie. You know? <laughs> so we're all just standing there waiting for it to get fixed. And that's why you don't like it because it's a pain in the ass. It takes a long time and it's, set up. Know, it's just like, I just like the steady cam. The steady cams are kind yeah. of a try to, you know, it's, it, 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 it takes 15 minutes to set up. You balance it, you get it on the guy, and you shoot it. And you, and you. I go, love steady cams. Right? That was my it's favorite. Just, um, it's just once you, once you, I think the Moby, and this is just my my own opinion. Um, I think it's too many moving parts, and I don't think the technology is there yet. I think you know eventually it will be, uh, but I think though at that time the cameras will be so small, we won't. The Mobies will just go extinct. <laughs> uh, the cameras will be in people's eyes, and they just yeah, yeah, tap yeah, their yeah, forehead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can and I can just work from home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pictures you up, guys. AD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone who is a, who the fuck put the fucking tape over the camera? I can't see what's going on there, guys. Roll sound. Yeah. See, this is the kind of job though that uh, that AI. I I can't conceive AI taking over because I, being in film and dealing with all these people, like certain things, maybe makeup, maybe uh, certain things where you can build a machine in and and do someone's hair, or do something. You know what I mean? But actually running all the things, an AD is that's an art form you know what yeah, I, mean? I mean i don't think that I, I think that it is one industry that is going to be when it comes to the floor when it comes to the floor 
I have a very, it, it's, you, we have to reach creatively very hard to imagine, you know, a film set being run all by artificial intelligence. It's just like, it's, it, I mean, I mean, one, I mean, the only, I mean, we, we, we live it today with CGI and we live that today. Yeah, but it would with, all with, have with, to be CGI. With animated films, right? Yeah. Like that's basically AI running everything because you're, you're, you're watching something that is created on a computer by a computer, but ultimately overlooked by a dude named Larry. <laughs> he drinks too much and has way too much nicotine in his body. Has way too much unprotected sex. So, um, so you know, it's um, you, I, I, you can't get a robot to do an AD's job. You can't get a robot to do a DP's job. Like it's too too subjective. Things move around too quick. When you got to shoot ten or twelve pages a day, you know, I don't know. I don't think. I mean, I could maybe see the focus pulling, maybe being yeah, uh, like that'll be over. built into a camera eventually. I can see or... a lot of in camera fixes and tricks yeah. and things like that. Like I can see, you know, with monitors and things like that, and you know, how much how much extra work does a DP need to do these days with lighting wise? As or will it come to down to th- you know, thirty five days and like a DP sitting at a computer and be able to control the, every camera, every light, everything, you know, well, like, I think in some, in some fashion, that's what they do. I mean, again, I'm not, a, I'm not a camera guy. I'm not a DB guy feeling kind of uncomfortable talking about it. But, <laughs> yeah. Well, we uh, don't really know, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, um, I've seen DPs just sitting at village and they're, and they're, they're adjusting the color balance on the at, at village They're you know, and then they've got guys in the, in the camera trucks that are getting the footage, you know, from the, from the SD from the cards or whatever, and then color timing it and, coming to back to the DP with an iPad with some stills of it and going like, what do you think? What do you the think? dailies or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, 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 um, yeah, def- there's definitely a lot of, uh, advancement going on there with, in terms of, in terms of that, in terms of being able to tweak your, your final product while you're shooting, as opposed to sending it off to a lab, you know, sending, sending your cans of 35 millimeter or 60 millimeter off to a lab you know, waiting a bunch of days for it to go through, then going to see it, and then talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then getting them to color correct it. Well, and then, you know, like, so things are definitely moving a lot quicker in that aspect. But <clears throat> in terms of grips, electrics, setting lights, hanging lights, you know, art department props, um, hair, makeup, costumes, you know, yeah. that stuff's always going to be a job that's going to be, you know, done done by human beings. You know, I think so. Well, it seems to be anyway. Yeah. Because um, a lot of jobs are going to be replaced, but this is one. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. oh, all my friends are in film, so hopefully. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, no, I think we'll be safe. <laughs> um, but anyway, so you're you're first dating these uh, um, these short commercial kind of things, and the, then um, yeah, so I did those, and then so that was around the Olympics. Um, I think the last one I did was for uh, for Richmond when they were doing the, the Olympic, uh, they were building the ice rink in Richmond. And so um, the architectural company that was pitching uh, their, their creative design uh, on paper, but they wanted, they wanted this, the company that I was working with to go out and shoot some beautiful things about Richmond, right? And we all know how beautiful Richmond is, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're like, yeah, okay, well, where do you want us to go? Like 7-Eleven? <laughs> like you want to shoot us? Like, like seriously, like what do you need? Oh, no, 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 go to Steveston. No, that's what they said. Go to Steveston. <laughs> that's what they yeah, said. Yeah, and they're like, and so they're like, they're like, yeah. So, um, you know, uh, we're thinking, and then like these are like the creative, like the creative people. So we're thinking, like, uh, what are they called? A heron, herring, heron. They're called blue. a heron, heron, right? The the bird with the long beak on it. Blue herring. The blue heron. I think it's a heron. It's a herring. Herring is a fish. Either or, we're talking about the bird here, folks. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, okay, so I need you to get, um, so we need to get a, a, a nice shot of the heron, you know, um, flying across the sky. And then we need to get a close up of the eyeball of the heron. Then we need to get a heron flying, uh, camera right to left and left to right. Um, and then we need to get a heron diving into the water and diving out. And so me and my uh, friend Anthony are like, uh, okay. Uh, that's gonna be fucking impossible. Like, well, unless it? you have a herring wrangler, yeah, or herring like, wrangler. yeah, yeah, or whatever they're called. So we go yeah. out there. We don't find any herons. Like, no. just, so I'm like, no, dude, let's go to the airport. Like, the airport, you know, that's it has, that's herring, that's herring territory or whatever. That, so, that bird sanctuary that's over yeah, there. Yeah. So we go out there, and there's a bird sanctuary out there, and so there's a heron, and it's about probably a hundred meters, hundred meters out in front of us, and the the and and now like we are like eight hours into looking for birds so my friend anthony <laughs> he's he's french right but he's real french he's from france right so he uh he's very passionate so he's got his camera and he's just like i'm gonna go get these fucking bird michael so he goes in this marsh and he starts like he takes his literally takes his boots off rolls his jeans up 
grabs grabs this Sony DSLR or not DSLR, but like big huge like one yeah, of those big mad, camera, big camera, big camera, expensive lenses on it. And I'm standing there like you're gonna. Like, so he goes out and he goes out and he's like 25 meters out and it's just like it's like. I don't know if you guys have ever been out to um, the airport where that bird sanctuary is, but it's like this boggy marsh. Very, very like dude, you. There is you couldn't put any vehicle in that terrain. Like it's, it's oh it's no, like a, it's like a, it's not. It's good. a swamp. It's really, it's a swamp. So he's going and and the herons just stand there like this, all like perfect like heron. So he's like there. He's gets like fifty feet, and I'm thinking like oh he's gonna get too close and he's gonna spook that bird. So he gets there. And then, uh, and then he, he, he gets, he gets to this final mark and he, and, and he's, he's like, and he turns to me, he's like, and I can kind of hear him and he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to shoot here. I'm going to shoot here. So then he sets the camera up and he, st- and he, and he zooms in and he, and he, I guess he, he gets like a close up of the, the, just the head. And he's like, Oh yeah, I get the close up of the head. I'm like, okay. And then, so he starts, and, and so he starts coming back towards me and he's like, Hey, so he goes, you know, he's about 20 meters from me. He's like, okay. So, uh, so Michael, I'm going to turn this around and point the camera and then you throw a rock and let's get it to fly. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, then we get our flying shot. I'm like, okay. So then he grabs the camera and he starts moving it around and right in the middle of him moving around the hair and just like, just picks up and just fucking flies. Oh. And it had, been, it had been standing there for a half an hour. Like, like and just, and Anthony was so mad. And then we ended up, we ended up finding another heron that was, you know, um, just off on, you know, a beach somewhere. And we were like trying to throw rocks within its vicinity to spook it to fly off. And it just sat there. <laughs> and then we were just like, fuck this. And we gave up. So that was kind of like our la- my last thing. And then we went to, uh, I finished that. And then um, I just kind of went, okay, well, this is all fun and games, but. Um, Did you make good money doing that? Um, I think they paid me 150 bucks a day, uh, which uh, at that time was okay. Yeah, no, that was that yeah. was a PA wage almost, yeah. right? Yeah, so that was okay. I think they maybe even paid me 200 bucks a day. I think they pay, they paid me a good because they just you know whatever company they just create a budget and um, so that was always good. But I I wanted more consistent work, and and it was slowly becoming when I first started working with them with Tin TV or Barbershop Films or there they had two names. Their productions were big. Not big, but they were, you know, they were like music video size productions. Um, and that was actually 18. But then about a year into it, um, they started, like, everything would just get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then it, all of a sudden, it was just like, I was just I was just being brought out there because I'm just now friends with them. And I was right. like, I'm like, okay, well, you know, like, you know, I'm not even a unionized member of the DGC, which I wanted to be. And, and I'm not really, you know, and it's now it's year four since, so this is now 2004, 2005. Um, so then I go out and I, um, I just decide, okay, look, I'm just going to become uh, a PA and I'm, and I'm going to commit to that now for a few years and get my membership into the director's guild because I want to become a unionized or not even unionized cause we're not even union, but you guys know what I mean. You know, I just want to become a unionized filmmaker, like a DGC, actually a part of the, yeah. And like have dental coverage and eyeglasses coverage and RSPs and stuff like that. So have your hours count, have my hours count. So then, uh, um, so yeah, so then that was that. And then, yeah, and then what did I do? And then, yeah, so then I went PA'd and then. You started PAing. That was your way in. Yeah, started PAing. And then, I mean, that was really great for me because I uh, um, was able to kind of take everything that I'd learned from music videos and, and these commercials into the feature feature film world and Plus, again, man, like I was just always having a good time. I was always in a good mood, you know, like I, I was always, you know, physically hardworking, setting up tents, laying up plywood, like locking it up. Like, you know, I found a lot of value in it. And you knew what you were doing when you went in. So you went moved up quick, probably from a regular PA to well, a key. Or? Yeah, yeah. So I did I did a couple. I think I did one or two shows as a key PA and then or not as, as a PA. And then I started keying. And then I started keying on like um, just like bigger shows. So um, I did like um, Rise of the Silver Surfer, did Night of the, Mu- then the Night of the Museums. Um, and just, like, just like probably about three or four years worth of, you know, pretty big. That's pretty where we big were show. together again. Night of the Museum too. Yeah, Night of the Museum. And then um, I Love You, Beth Cooper and a bunch yeah. of other movies. And then I had a, a, a production manager, or no, she was a second AD actually at the time. She saw me and she was like, okay, I, w- I want to make you a, 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 an AD. Because 
at that time, I, I, I told myself that when I was peeing that I wasn't going to walk around and be like, I want to be an AD. I want to be an AD yeah, <laughs> yeah. and bug ADs. Like, because I'm like, I'll get there. I just want to, I just really want to get the, on get, your own I merit. Just wanna, yeah. I want to get this peeing thing kind of done and focus on that. You know, if I want to keep PA, I'll tell someone I'll be in the onset key PA or whatever. And then, so, um, so then that happened and then, um, yeah, I started working with Catherine Kretz for a little bit um, as her key PA. So I did a couple movies with her and then just started, you know, going through all those steps. So I started tatting and I was uh, tatting, uh, which is training assistant directing, um, all kinds of shows like Supernatural and... Um, and, th- and that Rush job, and- a tat is a... Per- you're in charge of the uh, um, actors and you get them on set on time and you yeah you're kind of like well you're like a little mini first ad you're like a first ad without the punch you know without, without the, the power authority, yeah. without the power without you know sometimes with or without the respect it, it depends but you're you're there um you're being you're you, a lot of times you're being kind of like put right into a project where you've had no prep time you know you just show up on day one and you're on the floor with the first ad <laughs> just like, like that yeah. just like that like pictures up let's go right and um and you and you just go and you run, man. Like and you just run and run and run and run and well, like. What was your first show for tatting? Um, Do you remember? First show for tatting. Like was it? It must have been scary because you moved, or was it? Because yeah, you it was. Keyed, um, so I didn't know if it yeah, was a big change. For I was. You? It was. I was working with um, a first lady named John Penhall, and I, I forget what the show was called. It was so long ago, uh, but it was a really cool experience, and um, yeah. I mean, I remember he couldn't, or he was, he was like, I'll go get my car, go park my car or something. And I was like, I was like, oh, he's like, can you drive stick? I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, like, so that he, you know, things didn't go well after that. I was like, day, that was like, <laughs> that was, that was like day he two. drives stick? No. That oh. was like day two. I'm like, God, sorry, man. Like, like <laughs> sorry, I can't drive stick. Yeah. And then, you know, a couple of years later, I actually bought a car and learned on stick. So now I can drive stick. God damn it. Um, <laughs> because of that experience. Because of that experience. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. So, um, yeah, so I did that show and, and he was really, he was really great. Um, he, a little bit temperamental. These older school guys, they can, they can, they're a little bit more, um, uh, prone to, um, outbursts, I think, you know, that's my own, my own opinion. Um, so, um, yeah, I did that and then just, but I really liked it. Tatting was really great. It's like, you're there, you know, you're doing the background, you're running the background, which, which I was, I was always really good at. I had a good time doing that. Um, and then I went uh, into third AD world. Uh, I did third AD world uh, after that uh, for probably another four years, three or four years. Um, and then, yeah, the thirding was really great. It was, uh, and that was know, in the trailer, like you were talking mm-hmm. earlier. Yeah, your your relationship is 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 primarily in the trailer. You're kind of like the supervisor of of that world. You're, you know, you're the assistant director that runs um, the honey wagons, the cast rooms. You know, you're you're just there to kind of like oversee everything. Plus, it's like the little mini production office is there, so the printer and everything's there. So you're just kind of there to help distro paperwork. You know, um, run out uh, any script changes that need to be done. You know, photocopy call sheets for your second. Talk you to know, the uh, production office. Talk to the production office. Um, I created create a daily production report, which is a template that explains what you what happened that day. Uh, Why you went long for lunch? All yeah, that kind of like stuff. what time actors were in at, what time they were out. Uh, same with crew, like what time they were in and out. And that way, the next day, the producers or the production manager can grab that and just determine what their hot costs are, like how much that day cost them. You know, so it's a pretty important document, one that you have to get right. Um, and then, uh, oh, yeah. was was there cell phones at the time when you started? Because um, that made a big difference in the film industry. When everyone um, had a cell phone and you could call the production office directly, it's so different than because um. When did when did iPhones come out? I've like 2007, I think, right? So that was right around that yeah. time, yeah. So I think that when the first iPhone came out, it wasn't readily available. Like I, I remember, um, production manager maybe had one, or a producer, or an actor had one, but a lot of the crew were still working off of like um, flip phones and things like that. So I, what I remember is um, as a trainee AD is having to take pictures of uh, these things. They're called daily time reports where the crew fills out all the people that work that day. And what I would do is I'd take pictures of it and send it to my third AD. Uh, but the pictures were always really shitty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as soon as you got an iPhone, it was like kind of game changing. Now, obviously, there's a lot more that's happened that the, the phone has allowed to happen uh, in the film business uh, than just taking a picture of a DTR. 
I mean, stills, you know, sharing stills. Scouting. Um, There's all scouting, kinds of things like, that really like, help. Like they're they're now a, 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 a necessary tool, you know. Yeah. Uh, to to have, you know, when you're out there, and it helps everybody from the PAs to the producers to whatever. Like it's it, everyone. Every it really it just really helps. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, so tat, I, tat, I think I tatted for about four years and then um, thirded for about another three or four years. And that was really uh, that was a really fun experience too. Was thirding, thirding was um, was fun because you know I get along with ladies really well. Like I like I'm always making them laugh. So and cast I always like I'm I'm just known for being uh, for getting along well with actors and joking you know, around joking and joking around, yeah. having a good time with them. You know. So, because uh, it, it gets tense on set, especially if people haven't slept and done all that stuff. If you can make them smile, it yeah makes a yeah, difference. Yeah, yeah. If you can make them smile, it, it it does make a huge difference. You know, um. So I've always had really good positive experiences as a third, um, and then um, and then yeah, and then I just went right into first AD. I ended up doing a um show where the first AD on the day was not very strong, or just didn't want to be there. I'm, I'm not sure what was going on because I wasn't there. And the cinematographer um, was actually a cinematographer that I used to do music videos with um, <clears throat> at a first AD level. And the producer was getting really frustrated with the behavior of the first. And the cinematographer was like, hey, you should, you know, Bishop in the trailer, man. Have you ever seen him run a set? Like, you should bring him in to run a set. Like, he runs a pretty, like, pretty stringent set. So they're like, oh, okay. So then, um, yeah, we had a few days left on the show. And he's like, hey, man, hey, uh, I want to talk to you. And... He's like, I got two movies I'm going to be doing back to back and I'm hearing that you can run a set and that's all I really need is I just need someone to run these sets because it's, you know, it's, it's to the point where um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not able to get that. And I'm like, okay, well, from my standpoint, um, I've spent a lot of time running sets, but I, you know, when it comes to building a one-liner or any of the paperwork, the scheduling, I'm pretty green at, so I would need some help with that. So I need some patience with that. Right, and, I just, right. and I said, I just need to be very clear on that because I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I could come in and I can run your set and that's one, but don't one, have expectations one, that I know everything. Yeah. One small portion of the actual job as a whole, but just to let you know, the, you know, the organizing, the planning and working with big groups as a, as a first city, I've never really done before. I've worked with a couple of people on like a couple of day shoots, but like, and what to record on tech surveys, that kind of thing yeah, and like all those, everything like, like, like everything from even just creating a, um, what you call it? Like just templates on Word to whatever at that time. I mean, like, I think that was 2014, 2013. I was like, man, like, like, like you, and the producer was known to be a pretty hard, pretty hard ass producer. So I just really wanted to make him clear about that. And he's like, no, I'll help you. I'll help you. It's all good. And so when we went to, when we in the prep world, um, they, he just, all, you know, he just started going, yeah, okay, I'll help you out. And he, you know, he would start working on the board. He gave, he gave me a board, and he goes, okay, a board, which is basically a, a, a schedule. And he goes, here's the board. Now, I've done I've kind of done it for you, uh, but um, now you need to change it and move it according to, like, how we go on our surveys and things like that, and I'll help you with it. And I went, okay. And then so, uh, but, but, but prior to that, he made me do the chrono, which is actually just breaking down the script, creating the chronological uh, one-liner, and then giving him the chronological one-liner, and then him him boarding it and like moving them all around to sit to, to suit. So we were, we were kind of like working together on it and he was really great. And then, so, um, yeah, we banged on like a 10, 10 day, 10 day board. Wow. It was, it was a 10 day board with Luke Perry was the, uh, was the lead on it. So you had a real and star know. and it wasn't a huge thing. 10 day board is, is, ten uh, day, yeah. 10 day board is pretty, it's, you know, Oh, it's daunting. It's daunting, but you're, you know, but you're new. Yeah. And, and, and the, uh, but the director, the director is really quick. Uh, James Head, uh, he's done a lot of stuff. Um, and we had a really quick DP. So it went and we shot it and we got it and we shot, you know, but I got all my days every single day. Um, and then when any, if, if things had to move around, um, you know, in terms of like moving of a location, like if we need to shoot somewhere else instead of somewhere else, you know, uh, the producer was there and he was, he was helping, you know, move the, move those boards around and creating it while I was running the set. So that was really great. And then, uh, so I did that movie and then, uh, we did another one after that. And then, um, I think it was just getting stressful on everybody cause it was the same thing. It was a 10 day shoot, not a lot of time. And, um, yeah. And then, and then everybody got like less prep. So I think they were running out of money or something. So that was a tough shoot. And then we got through that. 
and then that was it. And then I, I think, you know, that was, you know, one summer, a couple of movies back to back. And then I just kept thirding for a while. Um, and then I got hired on with um, a production company called Real One and um, started with them. And then just had been working with them for three years as a first. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I did like eight or nine, eight or nine uh, videos for them, eight or nine uh, movie or eight or nine movies for them. Um, How many firsts did they have? Um, well, it was just, I was just, I was the first on it. So I think, I don't know how many, I think I did like six movies, six or seven movies. Okay. Um, and then we did, uh, and then I was starting to realize that there were some mistakes I was making as an AD where it was with regards to the second. So it would be, you know, me missing stuff on call sheets and things like that. So, you know, they were the people that are working with me. Like, you know, you need to, you need, you need to be some, doing some seconding, Bishop. You know, you you've moved yeah, into you, this first, first AD position, and you these, skipped an these important mistakes. Thing. These mistakes are things that you should be, you should have been catching, and why you haven't been catching them is because you you rarely second AD, right. and you don't know how to look at the call sheet, and so that's not good. Like. So I was like, yeah, you're right. So um, yeah, it wasn't the paycheck. It was the purpose of of the experience of learning the yeah, job. Exactly. So then I, I went and I and I started seconding. So you know, um, in between that time, I've done about four or five shows as a second AD. Kind of tried to pick up my game on there, and yeah, again, learning lots. Like, oh yeah. Do you I'll like do. it? Do you like seconding? Oh, I like seconding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, seconding's uh, seconding's a good job too because you're you know you're you're management. You're you're the right hand man of the um, first assistant director. Um, you're not needed to be on set all the time. You know, you could just go, you go off, you spend a lot of time with your production manager, your producers, and you just plan the next day. The thing is with ADing is the, the first AD re, um, is concerned about, um, and the TAD, what's being shot right now while right. we're shooting, what scene number, right? Where the, the second AD is worrying about the scenes that we're going to be shooting the next day. And the third AD is 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 concerned and, and is the... The job of the 3D is to report what happened um, the day that we're shooting. So it's like we're all in different areas of the film trying to manage it. So the first AD is like, what's going on right now? I'm, go I'm thinking about what's going to happen tomorrow. And the 3D is like, what happened yesterday? So, you know, so they can give that report to the producers to see how much yesterday cost. You know, so, I see. So, so, so what if there's us? Like I've been on shows where the second is on set a lot of the time. Yeah, so I mean that depends on the first AD. A lot of the times, the first AD will want the second okay. AD so on it com set. comes by style and stuff. Everyone's yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I've worked with I've worked with um, first ADs where they're like, no, just you know, they usually tell you in prep too, like you you don't need to be on set with me, or I like to have you on set or close by. And then so what you usually do as a second is you just you know plug in as close to you know as as close to the first AD, but not as close you know um, as possible. So well, it seems like the, like the ones on set were sending background or doing things at the first AD, just helping the first AD. Yeah. So if you've got a trainee AD or, or you don't have a trainee AD, which happens a lot of the time. That's true uh, too. Smaller shows. Yeah, and... yeah. Like the last one I did with uh, Troy, uh, I was a second AD and we had a third. We didn't have a TAD. And, but we had our, our last four days we had a TAD, but everything else it was just like, yeah. So when Troy needs help with background, I'd be like, grab my fucking laser pointer. I'd be like, oh, you go over there. You go over there. <laughs> You know, yeah. So it was. Um, Did you ever do background? Um, like as a background performer? Yeah. No, 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 never. No, I've always stayed clear of all that. I'm into the. Um, I'm into the behind the behind the camera kind of thing. Um, so, but I've done a lot of background wrangling, which I enjoy. Oh, okay. You've yeah. done background. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when as an AD, you 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 know you're not always working. Right. So uh, a lot of times what what you'll do is when you're done a show, you may have two weeks before the next show or whatever. And then you just got to be like, you know, put yourself on the availabilities list and be like, hey, you know, like I'm available to work as a Wrangler or a third AD or a second AD or, you know, and then you just get, get called. Like so on the 27th, the 28th, I'm going to work on Altered Carbon for, you know, two or three days. Setting as what? Back, setting background. Just setting background. Oh, setting background. Yeah. How nice. Six, 650 background or something. It's going to be crazy. That's massive. Yeah. My my yeah. first show was four hundred. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was just normal. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's gonna it's be it's crazy. Gonna, it's gonna be crazy, crazy. Um, but yeah, so it's um, so I think you know all around, 
all around it's a, a, a really amazing career it's just you've got to be really you've got to really 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 like it you know you can't go in there kind of thinking oh well, i don't know like we'll just see how it goes i mean a lot of people do and and they stick with it but from my experience um i think i've i've been able to maintain shooting so long because i just really ultimately love the job you know I just oh yeah yeah. It, that, yeah, that's a big thing too, and uh, it seems that you um, focus on um, what's a, the, the task at hand instead of having stars in your eyes about tomorrow being a director. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know what I mean? You're exactly. not like, oh, yeah. I want to be Quentin Tarantino and not yeah. pay attention to the show you're on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you know, and and even sometimes that formula works for some kids, right? Like if you know if they want to be, they want to be a director, they become a director. But my kind of thing was, yeah, before I start moving towards directing, I want to be able to make sure that, you know, I at least get another, you know, five or six, you know, first AD, you know, uh, gigs under my belt before I, before I'm going to take that next step, you know, which I'm, which is what I'm going to do. Right. Well, and a lot of the shows, cause I've worked on te television shows where the first AD will end up end directing an episode yeah because yeah. everyone's friends you've been working together for five years you never know right and then they're yeah. like oh well you know why don't you direct this one and see how good you do at directing because they've worked their whole lives to get to that point right? yeah and, and the and the prep too it, it, i mean the prep is very similar like when you work as a as a first ad with your director um the both of you are working kind of hand in hand making this thing go forward right right um a lot of the times the director will be more focused on the story and and finding beats in the script that don't work or that could be better and then making those changes and and and, and working hand in hand with the producers and the writers to to help kind of like make that make it a better story where the first ad is more of a logistical like where are we going to be this day where are we going to be that day but you know you, eventually you get kind of like threaded into those conversations as well anyway Oh, well, you know, <clears throat> like we did this one where we were like, where there was a, the, this girl in a truck or something. And they were like, oh, we're going to do this tarp. We're going to have this tarp. And they're, they're just like, oh, the director's like, we aren't, they aren't going to believe it. They aren't going to believe it. And then we, we all get threaded into this. And then, and then I'm just like, well, why don't we just make it like a hard, like a hard casing? Like, and then you could just lift it up and put the dead body in and close it. And Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, even though you're not, you're not, you're not specifically brought on to solve these problems. If you're, if you're looped in, you, you, you get to kind of play around with, with that stuff too. And, and sometimes have an effect. Right. right. On the artistical part yeah. of the, of the film, instead of just being the logistics and just being the crew. Yeah. Because that's what the first AD really is the boss of the crew. Yeah. You're the, yeah. the one who runs yeah. the whole yeah. show and the yeah. director says, Hey man, I'd rather be looking this way. And then the first AD makes it happen. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Move all these guys over and whatever it is. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's, um, and it's a really cool job. Um, do you get a lot of uh, uh, ADs that, that like listen to this, or is it just like, what's your audience? Do you get like a lot of? I've had uh, 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 some indie ADs that yeah. I've heard of, but I don't know exactly because it just tells you the city when I look up the um, things online on SoundCloud. Oh, I see, yeah. It tells you what cities, what countries, and oh, whatnot. Cool. And I've been heard all over the world. Yeah, oh, that's so cool. this is awesome. And yeah. uh, I believe you're the first real AD. Yeah. Oh, great. Because I've had scouts. I've had uh, uh, different people. I've had uh, uh, directors in ADs for sure. But like I said, yeah. indie world and have done it on a side thing and not done it professionally for movies yeah. and a show. Right. Yeah. 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 Because um, that that fascinates me about how um, it all runs like clockwork and it's almost like ants. Mm -hmm. If you were watching at the wrap out of a film crew mm -hmm. just to sit back and watch because I I was lucky enough as a PA that yeah. I you know, yeah. could sit there and watch it. And it's like, it's like ants. Everyone, you know, all the grips do their thing. All the lighting does their thing. Everyone yeah. it just yeah. goes, goes, goes. Yeah. It's a total system. And, and that's the thing too, is whether you're, you know, whether you're in indie world or big time world, it's all very similar. Just, yeah, they're like marching ants. Like, and that's oh, when, yeah. when, when you rap, it's like people like, that's when people really work. They're just like, I want to go home. Cause a lot of these times these guys are shooting 12, 13 hours a day, 14 hours a day. And they're just tired and they want to get out of there go drinking or whatever go yeah, hang, yeah. Hang out with their kids you know? yeah. <laughs> or yeah if it's a friday or whatever right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So, so is there anything uh, um i wanted to ask you this because the last time I, I had a couple of questions or whatever yeah. is there anything that uh, um really bothers you as a first ad is there something that you would wished uh could change in the behavior of any sort of crew or um have you is there, is there a problem that you come constantly come across that you want people to know that if the, if you just did it a different way it would be better or um, I mean, like, I think, time. I, I think, I think like my, uh, in terms of crew, not really, because I think that, I mean, with crew, 
I've never really had a, a too big of a problem with crew because I, I mean I get along with them pretty good. Or you know, could somebody be do, doing something better? Um, a lot of the movies that I've done, there's a lot of people that are inexperienced, so it's you know, it's just they've just got to learn. They've just got to go through each show, and each show you get better, and and, and blah blah blah. Um, I mean, I think ads in Canada, in Vancouver, I think definitely should get paid more. I think. That, oh yeah, yeah that's. I think that I think that, that there's a um, there is there is there is a there is a kind of in in imbalance in our guild where where it feels like you've got wealthy ads and you've got poor ads because it's you get ads that are working in lower budget movies and you get ads that are working in higher tier movies and it's not like one is working harder than the other it's just a different budget so i mean of course if you're doing you know dc legends and you're and you're and you're and you're bringing in you know 80 cast 90 cast there's more legwork there but um it just seems that there the guild has kind of gone well, you know, if this person's coming to Canada or whatever, they're going to shoot this movie and they've only got to, you know, whatever. They want to sign us on. Well, let's get our ADs. The, our ADs can take whatever, you know. They, they, basically, the producers can get away with paying the minimum wage. Where I don't think that should be the case. I don't think any any of us should, as ADs should be getting paid minimum wage. I mean, it's a it's a profession. It's and, and so. Is this across Canada? <clears throat> is it the same? Well, is, I mean, I don't want to get too into it. Or I is mean, it province just, to province? It just seems that it just seems that some of the some of the ways that we are getting paid and that, or that's getting negotiated on the lower end just seems unfair. It seems unfair to me. Okay, you know, because a lot of the times when I, when say say because I'm 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 kind of a starting out first AD. It's like when I go to a production company and I say, hey, look. Um, I'm, I, I want a first AD. I want to get my days, you know, and then they go, okay, great. You know, he's new. He wants to get his days. We can get away with paying him 300 bucks a day. Right. Like when we can save thousands by doing that, you know, Does I mean? a first AD always negotiate. Um, well there's scale, right? So once you get into a higher, higher tier and a higher, there's a, there's a scale payment, which is, you know, usually pretty good. But when you get into these lower budget movies, that scale doesn't exist. Oh, anymore. I it's see. It's kind of pay you. Right. So, and I've been in that world. So it's, it's, I don't think that that should be, I don't think that should be a part of that. I think that AD should, uh, first ADs definitely should not be making, you know, 300, 300 bucks. A no, day. you have so uh, much. I mean, like You're 24 seven on the phone. Too, well, it's, like. just, it's just, um, I, I just don't think it's fair. And, you know, all kinds of people say different things about it, but you know, um, to me, it's just, um, when you're responsible for running the safety of a set, you know, you, you, you know, you just, basically you, you don't want to hire someone to build your house and pay them $5 an hour. Your house is going to be shit. Right. right? Your house is gonna yeah. Be, your house is going to be crap. Right. So, you know, the people that are building your house, you pay them well. So they want to stick around and they want to work hard and they want to do, they want to do a good job. So that's where I'm at with that. Uh, besides that, I mean, like, um, you know, shout out to my guild. Like I, I, uh, the people that I work with, they've always been really positive. They've always been really great. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that are really great about it. Um, the, and the majority of the ADs that I've worked with are, are all really nice. They're all really Oh, me people. too. Yeah, a lot of them. together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it's a long road ahead, man. And we just try to, you know, do every day. I mean, my next movie is, uh, the first of June, some kind of attic horror movie. So that should be exciting, but it's a low budget and I'll be first ADing it. And, be and how long team. is that? Um, it'll probably be about two or three weeks of prep and then two weeks, two and a half weeks of shooting. Okay. So not killer. Yeah. 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 So, but it'll be nice. You know, it'll be in June. It'll be nice and warm out and looking forward to that. And yeah. That's hmm. about it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, uh, it's really good to talk to someone who's a first, because, uh, all the other times when I'm on set and there's a first AD, they're the one in charge and the boss. So you're not going, yeah. well, what about this? You're not asking questions. So now that I have a chance, I was yeah. excited about it. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. You know, the ins and outs. I've been yeah. done it for a while. It's not a new thing to you, even though you call yourself a new AD, mm -hmm. but you've been doing it for how long, you know, like years yeah. and years. And it's still new because you haven't done it for 40 years. Well, I think that there is, I think there's in the AD community, it's, um, you know, if you aren't doing a DGC show, you know, you aren't ADing until you're a DGC AD. Like, and I think that's the, in a way how all the ADs protect their, um, protect themselves. Like that's, that's just the way it is. So yes, as much as I've worked, you know, um, on music videos and commercials and things like that, none of that really does count. That's that, just learning. That's just learning. That's just getting a. That's 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 going okay, man. I've done this for four years. This is actually something I want to commit to. Now let's go. Right. right. So um, I just I think I took a, a unique a unique path. So 
and, and, I've, and I haven't rushed and pushed myself to, to get ahead. So yes, I'm a new AD where it comes to, when it comes to the, to the, you know, the direct director's guild of Canada, um, availabilities list. Right. I'm like, f- like 14 more shooting days and I'll be a category first. Right. So, but yes, you're right. On the other end, there's, there's like, there's still years and years and years of experience of being around filmmakers, running it, you know, getting it done. Well, like you said too, mm-hmm. the a guy does a third for years, like yeah. ten, over 10 years, yeah. you know, yeah. you're like, Oh my God. Cause he loves it or whatever. Yeah. Some people love that job and yeah. they, yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy. But uh, yeah, and, and I'm not going anywhere, man. Like I want to be doing this the rest of my life. So it's it's a job. I never wake up going, oh, fuck, I don't want to go to work. <laughs> I always wake up going like, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like it's a, uh, it's, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, like I may be up at five in the morning, but how, how I think about it is like, there's no traffic. Yeah. No traffic at five in the morning. I just like, roll right into work, put on the GPS, put on a little Tiesto, bang, I'm at work. Right. And especially thirding, you go in there and you're there so early. You know, you just grab a coffee or you grab some water and, you, and they have breakfast for you and you just start your day. So it's uh, in that way, it's pretty cool. And, um, you know, and, and just a majority of the people that are out there in the film community in Vancouver, they're all really great people to be around. There's, you know, the the dicks get weeded out really quick. Oh, you know, yeah. Like if there's somebody that's not that you can't work with, they get they they, they, don't, they don't come back. People start talking and they just they aren't welcome back. So you end up getting stuck with a lot of just really amazing people. Oh yeah, yeah. and yeah. I've had many times where um, I'm on a show and the ALM is really strict and really mean to people and and everyone has a problem with him, whatever. But he's only on the show for two episodes because it's a TV show, and then the other guy's doing a big movie, so yeah. he's coming yeah. back to ALM. And I'm telling people, just wait, don't quit, don't run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, he's a dick, but whatever. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and those they do get weeded out. It's not like they took that guy on because. They didn't have a choice almost. It was yeah. almost like, I know he's good and I know he's dick, but it's only two episodes. Yeah. We can live with yeah. that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, um, yeah. It, and it's, it, again, it's very rare now that I come across people that are just like unhinged, you know. It's me too. Just, yeah. It's just like, wow, like where like, you need to find a different job. You need to go, pal. You need to, you need to go to Home Depot. Well, and the, section. the industry is so massive now and yeah. everyone's moving up in all these jobs that, um, the only time that someone like that gets work is because they have no choice. But even then, a lot of times they'll take uh, inexperience and good attitude over yeah. some dick who's got a lot of experience. In well, it. yeah, I mean, and, and it's, yeah, it's, it's the devil you know or the devil you don't know, right? Like, I, I remember I did this, uh, what was it, it was a, a, a brief web, webinar or web, web series, tell us web series, first AD did it, with, and, the, and the production manager calls me, and she's like, Krista, and I've done a couple of movies with her, He's like, oh yeah, I want to bring you on. I'm like, oh great. I'm like, well, like, what have you been doing? So I've been shooting movies. I'm, but I'd rather just bring you on because I know you. Because I'd rather just know the devil and then not, you know, hire someone than not know the devil. <laughs> I'm like, oh thanks, Krista. Thanks. Yeah, you're the thanks. devil. I'm the fucking devil now. Okay, great, great. Oh. She hasn't spoken to me in like 15 years. I'm like, you haven't, you know, you haven't spoken to me in 15 years, right? Like, <laughs> I could have totally changed. I could be outside killing people now. You'd never know. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> And that's yeah. the other thing too, the family and the uh, industry. Uh, once you get to know people, you can really get to know them because you work really tight with them and you're with them for 15 hours a day for yeah. eight months. Yeah. So you really know this person and then you don't yeah. see him for a couple of years. And then when you do, it's like, you know them from yesterday because yeah. I spent that time and we had a, almost an intimate interaction because we were we had each other's back for so long. Yeah. And, um, it's a really, uh, inspiring to see that in other people where they will have your back. They'll, they'll jump right in and they'll make sure that everything runs smooth. They'll see you're struggling with something yeah. and they'll help you. Yeah. And you know, that exists across the board in film, which was really refreshing for me. I yeah. saw. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. And, and, and I think it's just going to get better. Like, I don't even think it's going to be slowing down. I think it's going to be speeding up and, unless there's a huge like media crash. You know what I mean? Like, there's just like anybody who's got any money now, they just want to create content. You know, you got Facebook creating content, you got Apple creating content, you got Jeff Bezos creating content, you've got, you know, <laughs> Netflix everybody creating content. You got the Oprah Winfrey Network, uh, just bought six shows with the company I'm working with right now. They're really? Like, yeah, yeah, six Christmas movies, six fucking Christmas movies. Christmas. I've done so many like, of those. Like, oh my God, like, oh God, <laughs> snow day out of days. Here we go. And then, In the middle of July. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's Hallmark, you know, and then, yep. there's, and then there's the OLN and then there's, and then there's, um, the first nations, uh, one. And then there's, you know, there's, there's just so much content out there. Like, 
you know, we're going to be busy for a long time. And it's, and it's relatively cheap to shoot, right? Now you got all this, all this drama going on, uh, horrible drama going on, you know, in Georgia where, I mean, a lot of, a lot of productions like to anchor in and, and shoot. And now they're pulling out of there because of the, because of some of the laws that they're, they're trying to pass. Oh yeah. That whole big explosion about oh, the, yeah, yeah. The abortion the and abortion. everything like that. It's just like a dark topic. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, you know, what's, oh, well, maybe they'll come to Vancouver. It's just like, oh God, oh, <laughs> Jesus. No. You, have you ever worked in any other country? Is always just Canada? Uh, no, I shot a couple of commercials in the United States. Um, I did. Whereabouts? Um, oh, fuck. I don't know you going to ask me. Where <laughs> it was a ski resort in California. Um, I don't I forget what it was called. It started with an S, I think. But it was uh, it was a real estate commercial, and we did it. And what they did is they, they bought the hotel um, that was up there, and then they converted it into condos. And they sold, they were selling the condos to people so they could have like you know a place to stay while they went and skied, and uh, me and Anthony and a couple other people went up there. Oh, what was it called? I forget what it was called, but it was up real high, high altitude, really beautiful resort. And we went up there and shot it. Uh, and you were hired as like the Canadian team. To yeah, go? just like to come in and just to just get panoramic shots of the of the ski resort. Oh, get panoramic I see. Shots of the of the um um. The, the rooms that they were selling and gotcha and all that and just kind of build hype around that so they could do that so um, that's what I've I think that's all I've done everything else I've done in, you know in Canada like you know in the interior BC shot in Calgary um, shot in Saskatchewan um, but mainly mainly everything here in British Columbia in uh, in Vancouver so you've done lots of location as far as going to the Okanagan or going to the interior um, the interior not so much, really. I like. I, I think I've, it's like Vancouver here, Langley, Maple Ridge. Um, never shot in Kamloops. Never shot in Kelowna. Um, shot on the island. Uh, shot a television series on the island. Went over to um, Calgary, just outside Calgary, to shoot a movie called Dead Again in Tombstone. Check it out. It's got Danny Trejo in it. It's awesome. Um, zombies. Right? Nice. Yeah. Uh, do you like doing those uh, oh my zombie god. horror zombies, movies it's so much zombies, fun eh fucking zombies and horses oh my god they're the best <laughs> they're the best have you done western before I've only done one and it was that it was the, oh, it was the zombie Tuesday western night, okay. and it was so much fun and it was uh, yeah it was Danny Trejo and uh, what's his name uh, Gary Busey's son Jake Jacob Busey who's oh, nice. a, yeah, d- d- heavily addicted to Sprite <laughs> guy could just chuck back Sprites like it's going out of business Interesting character, um, and then uh, Alicia Rutu. Anyway, she's a really nice girl. She plays, uh, I think, the love interest of Danny Trejo. I hope she doesn't hear this; she's gonna kill me if she does. Um, but yeah, so we, yeah, we went out there, and it was great because a lot of it was night shoots. I had this. Um, I was the on-set third assistant director, so I was basically just like a high-paid tad. But my first assistant director out there was um, a South African DGA guy, Directors Guild America guy, and he was. Cr- crazy he was crazy he was south african okay he's just crazy he was just like <laughs> man he was so much fun he, he would uh, crazy in a good way by the way crazy in a good way uh the energy level on this kid was unbelievable he was about six foot six foot five six foot six oh it's huge then. like just a big boy um you know born raised south africa First, he did a bunch of these movies. I think the um, there was a trilogy that he did that he was known for. I forget what it's called now. Um, but anyway, him and I got along really well. But he would he would be he, this is what he'd be like. He'd be like, "All right, Bishop, uh, we're gonna shoot this movie, and uh, yeah, and then when we're done, uh, we're gonna get Mike Rental and we're gonna go to the pub." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm like okay, all right." <clears throat> and then so we go to the pub, and he was he would not mess around. The guy was like just like ordering drinks, ordering drinks, ordering drinks. I'm like, dude, like we're getting we're. Things are getting crazy here. I'm having a good like time. Like he drinks, like he films, like but just like, go, bo- go, he's my, go. He's my boss. Yeah, he's my boss. And drink, drink. Here's a shot. Here's a so shot. So I remember one time we were shooting, and and it was like the third to last day or something, and we're in the mud and snow, and I got my gators and shit, and we go drink it, and then we just go back to his place. So I crashed on his couch. He crashed in his bed, and I remember waking up on the couch to him just yelling, "Jesus fucking Christ, mate! Fuck, what time is it? God, we're gonna be fucking like this." The first AD of this multi-million dollar fucking movie. I'm like, like oh it's fucking 8 12 we have to be there at like 8 40 or something <laughs> like oh jesus and he's running around putting his pants i'm getting dressed or my gaiters are still on my boots are still on get in the car just 
rail down to this, you know, this, we're, at, we're at this big, um, big ranch, right? Get in this ranch, get our laser pointers out and our walkies and, you know, run to set, you know, get everybody to get us breakfast. And then just, yeah, just like right to it. Get the horses, get the fucking stud <laughs> doubles out here. Where's Jacob? Grab Danny. Jesus. Pictures up. You know, let's get that drone in the air. Fuck. You know, like, like, like that. Like, copy that, sir. Copy that. Here it comes. Here it comes. You know, like, and then that for like 12 hours, you know, it was super cool. Um, and it's kind of cold, right? So you're always, you're kind of, you're always going, you know, and like, that's the one thing I don't like about the summer is you get so lethargic, right? But yeah, oh, you have yeah, the heat and yeah, stuff. Yeah, the heat. Eating like, and. Like, oh, you just like, all you do is like lay around. Um, but and yeah. you don't want to drink coffee because it's boiling hot. And yeah. Like, and it, and you crash. Like, that's like, I'm not a big fan of coffee because it picks you up and then it puts you down, you know? So it's, um, yeah, but that, but yeah, that Cal, the Calgary one was great. I did a movie in Saskatchewan. Where we shot at a, a particle accelerator, and the only particle accelerator I think in Canada is in Saskatchewan. Uh, so we got to shoot uh, in and around that, which was really neat. Uh, that's when I was really young, though. That's when I was on Smallville, and I went over there to first AD it. <clears throat> and they and that's like, yeah, I was I was just I was in Tad World, so um, I remember having to sk- reschedule the movie, and I just I'm learning the software, the movie magic scheduling software, and I'm like calling. Calling out my AD buddies, you know, Ian and Steve. I'm like, oh, man, can you guys help, help me out? Me. <laughs> help me, man. Like, I'm dying here. Like, if I don't have a one-liner for this producer to look at, and like, and I'm in a coffee shop in Saskatchewan in like six hours, dude, I'm fucking done. Like, like the, yeah. j- the jig is up, right? Like, I'm busted. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Like, like I'm an imposter pretending I'm in a first AD. Yeah, yeah like- and I had these two ADs that were on, on Smallville. Um, Steve Ethor and Ian, Ian Smoil, and they're they're still. They're, I think Ian's doing Ultra Carbon now as a first CD, and Steve's first CD and something. But they were always really good to me. So I, you know, I remember sending the board and be like, you know, like they tweak it and send it back to me, and good luck. So they were they were really great. Um, and yeah, I shot a movie up there, and it was, it was. Um, they grossly overestimated how long things would take. So I was like, okay, well. You guys have here. You you guys actually own the particle accelerator for seven days. I'm like, well, I can get us out of here in four. Like, oh well, we we can't do that because we booked all these locations for these pay, like prepaid. Like they, I'm like, well, you know, you're gonna be running into problems because we're gonna run out of things to shoot. And they're like, well, no, I mean, this is nine or ten pages. I'm like, yeah, but a lot of it's like like half of this movie is walk and talks around this particle accelerator with two guys in white lab coats, like. You know what I mean? Like, and this, and you know, the, you booked the, way too much time. Well, yeah. And it's just, you know, the, the, the scene number count in the script is like 30 scenes. So what that means is you've got like 10 page scenes, right? Uh, eight page scenes. So, and they're walk and talks. All of them were walk and talks. I'm like, we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to bang off um, your eight page day in before, way before lunch. Right, because we just put the guy on a chair with wheels on it, and we just have someone pull him, and they just talk about it. And we had to, and, and or talk about it being acting, and uh, we had um, two really really experienced actors, right? So then, then that, and that's yeah, what that happened. adds to it. And that's what happened is we went there, and I'm like, okay, well we might as well pull up scenes, and so we were out of there in three days. So then the crew <laughs> had like you know two days off, right? Two days off to just do whatever, but everyone still gets paid their their flat, which is right? the dream for which anybody. Dream. So yeah. fuck, people are loving me. They're like yeah. shit, bitch, like. Cause I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go over here. Let's go. And then that ended up falling into all the other shooting too. Is I was, they were, I was like, again, you know, this is a, this isn't like a 15, this isn't a 15 day movie. This is like a 12. This is like a, a 10 really with all these walk and talks. Um, so it was a really good experience, but the particle accelerator is really cool. You know, like cool. Really yeah. Nice. Saskatchewan's a really great place to shoot in. Um, I think, they just lost their tax credit when we went out there. I guess they had a really good tax credit there. There was a lot of shooting going on there, but um, they pulled it, so they were feeling the 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 bust. So when we went up there, even to get a truck with lights, we had to like drive to Alberta or something, grab a truck. Wow, and, you know what I mean? like, really? We had to drive somewhere to to another province just oh. to grab like a slush truck with with some good oh lights in it. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. I remember talking with the production manager about slashing the, the lighting package because the lighting package that the DP wanted was all this. And he's like, oh, I don't think we're going to be able to get all this, man. Like, you know, Saskatchewan, man. Like, but, um, but yeah, so that was a pretty cool experience. Yeah. But nice. yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell, my man. Yeah, no, yeah. I, uh, I, I got to wrap this up for sure. It's been long yeah. enough for it. Uh, but, uh, 
Yeah, I love chatting with you because there's always so much to talk about yeah. for sure. And yeah, yeah. and there's um, just because I've never been a first AD, I've never been in that world. I'm just fascinated by that. And I like I know as a PA when um you go on to set and you're there till the last truck, you know, when the taillights leave yeah. or whatever. Um, but the first AD, there must be so much appreciation that you can leave when it's done. Yeah. You, know oh, yeah. you yeah, gotta yeah, wait yeah. for three yeah. hours yeah. after. Oh my God. I mean, like, yeah, that, that, that's a really great thing about first ADing is that, is that you, yeah, you, sh you show up, you know, a half hour before call. Um, yeah, like, some... Hey, get up. We gotta go to set yeah, right now. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't happen to the PA. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, you you show usually like I mean like how how I've kind of found it is is you come in when the director comes in. You usually work that out with the director when you're when you're hanging out and prep. And my kind of thing is like uh, is they usually like to come in an hour before call, and then as you get closer to the end, they're they're coming in a half hour before call, and then the last couple of days are just coming in a call. And so it's a it's a communal feeling, I think. You know, well once you get comfortable with it with the team with everything, yeah. Well, yeah, and you and you're prepped, and you know you don't you know you don't have. You know, like people are people are starting to drop off like flies. You know, like PMs are starting to worry about other shows and, and actually right. wrapping up the show. Producers are kind of moving on. You know, there's an, it, so you're you're just you, when you're getting to the end of it, you're like, oh, okay. You know, you, you start to kind of like come in a little bit later. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, great job. It's a great job. Yeah, no, yeah, okay, yeah. well, yeah. that's a wrap. All right, pal. All right, take care, man. Okay, bye. Okay. I love talking to Mike. That was great. Uh, so join me next Monday when I have a conversation with Janice Yip. She is now an accountant in the Vancouver film industry. And uh, yeah, she has really good advice and has uh, had lots of jobs. So it's a good one. Um, I will talk to you next Monday and I hope you have a good week. Take care.